All right, here we are. Um, we're looking at Blender. This is what you should be looking at when you first open Blender. Um, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the Blender Summer of Documentation Introduction to Character Animation um, wiki that's out there. I'm sure you can find it out there. You probably already have. You can find it on the Blender website and also just I can read it to you, but you'll probably not remember it. Um, it's http colon slash slash mediawiki.blender.org slash index.php slash bsod slash introduction underscore to underscore character underscore animation. Once again, if you just search for bsod character animation in Google, you'll find it very quickly. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and show you here is first things first. We want to start with a fresh clean slate. What I'm going to do to clean everything out or to clean out separate options, you would hit the X key. Right now, the only thing I have selected is this box, as you can see by this pinkish purplish outline. I also want to delete the light and the camera all at the same time. Which brings me to our next point, the A key is an apple. If I tap that, see now nothing's selected. If I tap it again, everything's selected. Tap it again, nothing selected. Again, everything. Brilliant. Genius. Now, once again, the X key would delete everything. So, I'm going to hit the X key now. Ooh, I got a pop-up. What does it say? Okay, question mark. Erase selected objects. Hmm. Yes, that is okay. I think I might. And then left mouse button click. And voila! A clean slate. Now, see how I'm moving this window around? The way I'm doing it is just by holding down the middle mouse button. The way by default you have to do it is hold the shift button and then drag. But as you can see, mine is in the opposite world because I've set it up that way. I like it like this. The way to change it if you want to be just like me is to come up here into the view and controls and the way I got up here is just by with these double arrows pulling down with the left mouse button. I turned on view name so I always know what viewport I'm in and I also changed the middle mouse button's default to pan view. Whatever I have selected, if I hold down the shift button, the opposite one will take place. So I, by default, like to pan around and just make sure I'm looking directly at my object. And then I like to rotate with the shift button. That kind of keeps me <laughs> from rotating by accident, I'll be honest. That's a personal preference. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this back up. Oh, one other thing you might want to change is an edit methods right here. So the second one over, um, just to your undo steps up to 64. I'll just help you in case you... Um, you know, mess up and then 32 goes out really quick. Alright, now I'm going to close this up. But you can play with things in there. Closing. Alright. So now, this brings me to another great point. I'm just bringing up plenty of great points while I'm walking you through this. Now I'm in this user view. I'm not in front. I'm not in top. I'm not in right view. Not in perspective view. I'm in user view. Ugh don't like it. It's good for some things, but not right now. So what I'm going to show you is how to get from different viewports. On your keyboard, on the right hand side, you know there's a numpad. Your 10 key, you know, all those numbers right next to each other, very convenient. Um, you probably use it every day, all day long, but you just don't think about it. Alright. Well that numpad, on the right hand side of your keyboard, there's a number one button. Go ahead and press that now. That puts us into the front view. Once again, right here, I can see that I'm in the front view. And I'm now not in a user view. It is so exciting. All right. The three key on the numpad will bring us into the right view. The seven key on the numpad will bring us into the top view. And the five key Ooh, that didn't do anything. What did that do? Is actually toggling perspective. So if I move down, I'm in a perspective view. 
when I hit 5. If I was hitting 5, that is. Haha! <laughs> I'm skilled. Alright. See how it changed to perspective right there? It won't change this name to perspective, but it will change how you're looking at things. Not a big deal. Some people prefer to work in that way. But we're going to stay in the orthographic views. So go ahead and hit the 1 key on the numpad, and I'm sorry if that didn't make sense what I just said. It's all good though. Hit the 1 key. See how now we're looking at the front of the view? Ah, we're in perspective, but still at the front of the object. Hit the 5 key now, and it'll make perfect sense. Ah, now I am just seeing the front in an orthographic viewport, like in any of the other brands out there. Excellent. So I kind of made sense there, I hope. If not, um, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> moving on. So we want to start in the front view, so that's a good place for us to be right now. What else would I like to discuss with you before I get started? You know, I think that's it. Right now? Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. One more thing. See this little icon here in the middle? That's called your 3D cursor. Anywhere that this icon is, and I'm just moving it by clicking with the left mouse button, is where your item is going to get created. So an important thing to remember is to hit... If this ever gets someplace weird, like you forgot that you select things with the right mouse button, and you want to get this back into the center, and you don't want to be off by like a little bit anywhere, Go ahead and hit the shift key and C and it'll put it right in the center for you. So it's an excellent tool if you're over here looking at something, forget that you know the right mouse button is how you select, which I do from time to time coming from other applications. Shift C will put you back in the center. And just because we're on that note, I do want to also let you know that there's different ways to select things. I think this will be a good time to just show you that. I'm going to go ahead and create a few things here. The way to create something, and this is not the first thing that we're going to create in this tutorial, is by hitting the spacebar, add, or edit, or you can access a lot of things in this menu. But for right now, I just want to go to add, mesh, plane, or you know, cube. We'll do cube. That was the default item looks like a plane right now because we're in the front view which is an orthographic view and you only see the four vertices which are these pink dots that are facing us by the way if you're not familiar with vertices let me explain that real quick see this that little dot right there that's a vertice and that's a vertice and when two of those are connected you get an edge now I'm going to rotate my view for a little bit. See how that's a cube? Excellent! Ah, now we're in a perspective view. It's so brilliant. Once again, I'm just rotating the cube. See now how there's four vertices. So we have four edges, because these two connected bring you this edge. These two connected bring you this edge. These two connected bring you this edge, and this edge brought to you by these two vertices. And this in the center, where everything's filled in, is a face. So now you know. Vertices are the little dots, edges are the lines, and this is the face. Brilliant. Genius. Alright. Another cool thing to be aware of is there's a lot of different ways to do these things. You can select different ones, such as vertices right here with these little dots. If you put your left mouse button over it, you should say vertex select mode, edge select mode, face select mode, right here. So that's really good to know. But if, like me, you sometimes want a little bit more room and s things to look at, and you hit the control button and the up arrow, you'll be in full screen mode. It's really nice to be in full screen mode, but I should let you know 
a shortcut so you don't have to go if you don't have this up, up for some reason or if you don't feel like going down to or up to the header depending on where you have it you can also hit the control tab key which will bring up a select mode for you once again that was control tab all th all at the same time so you hold control down and then hit the tab you can select vertices edges and faces from here as well so that's really handy so if I for example hit no header right here and no header right there and you know just well you get the idea so what I would do then is just hit control tab and I could go into vertices edges or faces really good and once again remember that the A key toggles no selections and everything selected no everything no everything it's pretty pretty great so now if I hit the control down key or down arrow for that matter I'll get my screen back look there's everything there's that header back and there's this back and I even put that one back so it's good times I just wanted to show you that just so you knew how to do it because the faster you get with those hotkeys the faster everything else will go alright so I also wanted to show you one other thing so I'm in vertex select mode right now I'll use the A key once again to select nothing and now I can select one of these with the right mouse button see how that's now selected and nothing else is that's how to select one vertex however say I want to select multiple and I don't want to have to select them all on separate times if I did I would hold down the shift key and use the right mouse button and select more than one like so which now I have a face selected because I selected four vertices excellent if I had the A key again to, de to deselect it and then hit the B key on the keyboard see how I get this weird crosshair dun 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 I'm gonna shoot the box shoot the box no I'm not alright <laughs> if I go ahead and drag this now just with the left mouse button I can select it so I let go of the mouse button I selected something a key point as well is I can hold down the shift button and well now I'm scaling it to show you how cool that is and I just hit the escape to go out of that but I'll tell you about scales later if I hit the shift button it won't work but I can add additional if that makes sense I can't do another box selection but I can right mouse button on additional vertices to select them so that's a cool workflow technique I can press once again that was A to deselect, B to select, select those, and then hold down the shift key and add a vertice that I may have missed. So a cool feature. We will get into that later again, I just wanted to briefly mention on it. And to save, which is very important, you can hit the, hit the F2 key, which will bring up your big dialog box of all the things you have on your computer that you would like to save. You can give it a name up here so I will type this as test I will give it an underscore and I will name it 01 the reason why is because like some other programs out there not enough of the programs out there but some of the programs out there I can then incrementally save so now I have test 01 if I save this file and then exit it out you see that it's test 01.blend now excellent but now say I change something like I select this and I'm just gonna move this over don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing I'm just making a point I can go back to F2 I can hit the plus key on the number pad see how it changed that to test underscore 2 excellent and now if I hit enter and save I have now created test 02 so it's really easy to you know kind of have a step by step process so if you wanted to go back what did I do in step one or what did I do in step two this will take care of you on that so it's a really really good thing to do so that's some cool features that I wanted to show you alright 
ooh, 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 ooh. One more thing that's going to be awesome that you're going to want to do. Remember how I had you up your um, undos to 64? Well, it'd be a good thing to know how to use that. Now, wouldn't it? I thought so. If I hit the Control z key... Ooh, look what it did. Oh, it just undid what I moved. Now hit the Control y key. Ooh, it redid it. So Control z undo, Control y redo. Control z undo. Why redo? Woo! Yeah, get a hang of that. <laughs> it's going to be a good feature to know. I can undo pretty much all the way back through all those selections that I did and all the craziness and the funkiness. What I'm doing right now is just hitting Control-Z repeatedly until I'm all the way back to as far as it'll go. No more steps to undo. Oh no! How do I get rid of the box? I don't know! <laughs> a little melodramatic, if you will. But, if you remember from the beginning of this lesson, I went ahead and told you about the X key. Go ahead and use that, because everything's already selected. I can hit Erase All. Ah, <sighs> clean screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the F1 key again. Oh, sorry, not the F1 key. That's crazy. That's the function key. If I hit F1, I get the open menu, which is not what I wanted at all. The number one key. I'll go to front view. Remember, I'm in perspective right now, which is not where I want to be for the next part. So go ahead and hit the 5 key to toggle between orthographic, which is the 2D look, and the perspective, which is the 3D look that we have right now. Go ahead and hit the 5 key. We got the perspective. Now, as a reminder, Shift C will center up that cursor. Excellent, it's right there. And. Ooh, another good point. See this little dot right here? This will help us explain the very, very last thing on my list of things to explain. When you create an object, you're directly put into edit mode. There's two different, well, there's multiple different modes. I'm not going to say two different. But there's two main modes that you'll use currently. Edit mode, which is how you edit and move those vertices like we were doing, and object mode. The way to switch between the two very quickly is to hit the tab key on your bar. Do you see how it jumped back over here? Let me show you that again. See this pinkish dot? That's the center of the object that we had created, and we didn't delete it when we deleted all the vertices on it. So once again, tab will put us over into the object mode, and it selected that because it's still something left. So you can go ahead and hit X again and erase selected object. So now that's gone. Meaning there's nothing in this scene. We can also, of course, go to File and New, which is Control X, and that'll open something brand new for us to get started in on the next one. All right. Well, I hope this at least gave you a good introduction to what we're going to be doing and how to do the various functions. And I will see you on the second part, where we're actually going to start building the mouth. And if you have any suggestions of anything of that sort, go ahead and please leave a comment so I can go ahead and address it and maybe re-record this video to help you guys out. I'm also over at 3dbuzz.com, um, and my screen name is Gendabomb Pro. if you want to go ahead and find me there. All right. Thanks everyone so much for watching, and you guys have a great day, night, or weekend, whatever. Thanks and goodbye.